Welcome back for another video. We're going to go over a new three-part video series for you guys, for all you guys who have an off-season to work with. So here in Toronto, Canada, we have an off-season that's generally November till mid-April. So that's tons of time to work on, to make, uh, work on things and to make a substantial improvements in the swing. So we're gonna go over how to structure your off season so that it's, you have a nice progressive uh, pathway to seeing improvements come April when your season starts. So um, if we divide the off season practice into three parts, let's call it backswing, downswing, and power, we want to make sure we move through this uh, progress in that sequence because without a good backswing, it's very hard to make a good downswing. Without a good downswing, it's very hard to add power and make while making sure the ball is flying in a predictable fashion. So in part one of this three-part video series, we'll talk about the backswing first. So generally speaking, most amateur players can benefit from having more width in the backswing. By having more width, it helps us create a more um, shallow downswing which gives us more rotation and then we can add the power later but back to the backswing how do we add how do we create more width well let's start by calling let's start by saying what width is so if we set up and we make a backswing the width is making sure that my arms are long the hands are far from me and the club is far from me the narrower the narrower i get the more my arms bend the closer my the hands get to me and then the closer the club gets towards the target or towards the screen if you're practicing indoors. So this is the widest backswing. You can see the arc is very wide. The club is very far from me. The hands are very far from me. My arms are very long. This is very narrow. The arms are very folded. The hands are very close. The club is pointing at the screen. So from a looks perspective, from the down the line angle, a very narrow swing you can see has, has my hands very close to my body. The club is pointing at the screen so you don't see much of the club shaft at the top of the backswing and my right arm is very folded. There's not much of a window you see at the top of my backswing. If I make a wider backswing, you can see I turn more, you see a bit of a window, that triangle between my arms and you can see much more shaft at the top of the backswing. Those are some key indicators for you to know whether or not you're wide or narrow in your backswing. So how do we get more width? Well, if most players tend to overfold their trail arm, overhinge their wrist, we're gonna cut out all of that. So when you set up, we wanna make sure that to exaggerate, we're gonna feel like we keep our trail arm straight and we have zero wrist hinge in the golf swing. By feeling that, for most players, it actually helps them fold the trail arm the right amount and hinge the club the right amount. You can see here, I have a little bit of trail arm fold and have a little bit of wrist hinge, but my left wrist is still flat and my right wrist is still bent. So for me as a righty, that's what we want and we see tons of shaft here, okay? That's, that's how we know we're pretty much on the wider side. So if we set up and everything, you can see my arms, hands, and club is in front of our torso. If all I do is maintain that relationship, turn with straight arm, feeling straight arm, no hinge, that helps us sync up the arm unit with the torso, which is again, one thing, uh, something that we want. And two, we have all the extra width now. So if I do, do this slowly, all I'm gonna do is turn while feeling like my trail arm stays straight, feeling like I have no hinge, keeping everything in front of my torso. And you can see the contact sounded pretty clean. I have nice width. I see shaft at the top of my backswing. I see a nice little triangle in between my arms and nothing is too folded. If I start narrowing up like most people do, most people, most amateur players tend to think, oh, I need more wrist hinge. I need more wrist cock. I need more arm fold. I need all of that to make my swing longer to create more power. But if that's the case, your downswing becomes very chaotic. I chunk that because everything that I've done in the backswing with overfolding my trail arm, with overhinging my wrist, that makes me have to undo everything in the downswing. But undoing everything in the downswing, it tries, it steepens everything. My hands get too low. The low point control gets out of whack. Things that we don't want. So um, for for us, for a lot of amateur players, we have to make sure we add width. So just as a summary, we have to make sure at the top of the backswing. If you're watching yourself on video, we want to be able to see club shaft at the top. We want the lead wrist to be flat, the trail wrist to be slightly bent, and we want the trail arm to be very long. You see a nice little window, a nice triangular window in between my arms. If you're too narrow, you see no shaft, very small triangle or no triangle at all, and my arm is very folded, you can see here. So we don't want that. So 
To do that, we're gonna, again, keep the trail arm straight, no wrist hinge, keep everything in front of the torso. All you're gonna do is turn and turn, and that's all you're gonna do for now, okay? So work on the width in your backswing, work on it, let's say, for the first month, month and a, month and a half, and then we can dive into the downswing after that. So hope that makes sense. Any questions, let me know, and we'll go from there. Thanks for watching, everybody.